Every single individual, including the animals, the monsters, have compassion, have love, have patience. If you look into how they, you know, bring up their kids, then you can understand how much they can show love. Even a monster have. You know, they have different kinds of, uh, diff all, the, all the positive attitudes. Now, being a human being, who can understand the importance of these positive attitudes, who can learn and who can be trained in adopting these uh, mechanisms to develop uh, positive uh, personalities, then this is the quality of being human being. And once you learn these uh, mechanisms and uh, you know techniques, then you can develop these positive attitudes. And these are what I think some of the efforts uh, towards that d direction. The once we have uh, some kind of, at least to some extent, control on our negative attitude, at least to have some idea about controlling on our negative attitude and developing our positive attitude that will make lots of difference in our life. Now, as I said earlier, on this very issue, scientists are paying attention. I'm just coming back from the United States, attending a conference on neurology and uh, Buddhist uh, mental system. There are so many labs in, the, in prestigious universities in which neurologists, chemists, Physics, physicists and psychologists are in, involved in doing experimentation on human mind and brain. It is one of the very latest findings in the last few months that through meditation on compassion and mindfulness, a person can bring changes in the expression of genes this is a very latest finding. You cannot find in any of the science articles. So once we can bring changes in the expression of the genes, and once we can bring changes in the structure of uh, neurons in our mind because of our meditation, then that can leave a very strong and a very uh, deep impact on the behavior of the person. So through spirituality, then comes the ethics. Ethics is the external part of the, uh, you know, ethics is the manifestation of the spiritual practice. As I said that, uh, spiritual practice does not necessarily, you know, uh, have to be connected to going to a temple, and, uh, having, you know, performing rituals and rites and things like that. The purification of purification of mind is the core element of uh, spirituality. And ethics is the manifestation of that. Ethics is not simply, if you look into the you know, definition of ethics in Western dictionaries, then you will find something like you know, principles of morality associated with the, uh, some religious beliefs that leaves impact on your behavior and something like that. You know? But according to Indian system in general, and particularly according to, to Buddhist, tradition, we have uh, Kai uh, Shila, Vag Shila, Manasik Shila. We have ethics related to body, ethics related to speech, ethics related to mind. So the mental ethics is the most important. And then comes, after the mental ethics, then the, the more kind of, you know, Gross manifestations are your corporal or bodily and spiritual speech uh, ethics. So I think in management, it is extremely important. Now these days, you see, in the West, if you look into the, in some of the courses of management, then you will find uh, so many uh, the chap chapters related uh, to the managerial uh, ethics uh, incorporating Buddhist and Indian philosophical schools and things like that. Now, in the in last two years, His Holiness has written a way, way, way of leaderships in which he suggests that uh, 
A leader does not necessarily have to be at the national level. The real leader starts from the family. The real leadership starts from within the classroom. The real leadership starts from within the small you know, community. Down to earth, ground, you know, ground level, at the ground level. And from there, he suggests how a leader can develop an app, you know, aptitude and approach which could be constructive, holistic. Let it be at the very village level, let it be at the country level, let it be at the you know, global level. Leaders must have you know, that kind of holistic and deeper attitude. When the 9-11 took place, then His Holiness the Dalai Lama wrote to George Bush, conveying his uh, expressions and uh, concern and uh, uh, solidarity. After that passage, he wrote that, Mr. Bush, you should look into the causes and conditions of this very incident. Unless you address this very incident on the basic of, on the basis of the, the, the very ethos that has brought to this very event, you cannot address the uh, problem in a more deeper and uh, real, realistic way. So you need to address it in a more deeper and in a more realistic way. So that is how a leader has to, you know, have develop an attitude. Uh, we, I think this program has very uh, only one hour's time, so I should not spare much time. So thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you very much.